I mean, there, there, there are many things that you can remember what the man has done. And certainly he has done a lot to make Singapore to what it is today. I, I suppose if you ask me, the one thing that comes to my mind is a certain way of life, a certain way in which we organise ourselves as a society based on the two curve principles of meritocracy and multiracialism. He believes in that. And I think he went out his way to make sure that those two principles are applied equally to all communities. And for me in particular, it was important for the Malay community that he saw fit to make sure that the Malay community is ready to be a part of the Singaporean family by adhering to those two principles and applying it fairly and, and squarely. And whenever there were problems, you know, he would go out of his way to try and assist the community to find a solution. So I think if you ask me, it's a certain way we organize our life as Singaporean. That to me will be his enduring legacy. And I think that is the most difficult part for us to imagine that he's no more around. The man that continued to remind us that you have to maintain these two principles because that's the only way we can survive and there's the only way we can differentiate ourselves from the other countries in the region. I think that's important for me because without that, we wouldn't be where we are today. So that, I think, is a sense of loss. And I hope that we can reflect back on those two key principles and how we can continue to ensure that we maintain those two principles because that is the two principles that have made us where we are today and then those are the two principles that we continue to maintain in the years to come because that's how Singapore survives and how we can continue to survive uh, in the face of the challenges that we face in the future. Yeah. How do you think Singapore can best remember him and how do you think he wants to be best remembered? I think just to make sure that Singapore continues to survive as the way it is basically, you know. He had enough gumption in his guts, in his belly to find the solutions, the difficult solutions, because he wanted to make sure that Singapore survived. I think the very idea of Singapore is important to him, and I think we can remember him by making sure that the idea continues to flourish, not only in this generation, but for the generations to come. Because without that, we would not exist, you know, because I think that's what we all left with. Is that he made a country out on an island. I mean, it's an impossible dream, but he made it. But he made it with a lot of hard work, a lot of tenacity, and I think the most important thing with the conviction to take a very long-term view. You know? And it's sometimes when I think about some of the things that we hear being discussed on the internet, it is a sad day if we just ignore all the lessons that we have learned um, from the man and his experience. You know, If we do that, I think it will be a folly for all of us, basically. You know, we have to continue that story, we have to continue the experiment, because that's what it's all about. If not, we have nowhere else to go. I mean. You know, Singapore has no margin of error. He knew that. He understood that very, very well, basically. He personified that. And therefore, he didn't make any excuses about the things that he needed to do to make sure that Singapore survived. I think that's the kind of gumption that you need to ensure that we can continue to develop. Because the problems that we are facing is going to be very complex. And I think we need that kind of commitment that he showed. I think that's the thing that we must learn from him. And we have to keep that alive, to me especially, for the younger generation. Because without that, it's going to be a difficult journey for us ahead. Your most favorite personal story? Ah, you know, I've known him for many years in cabinet. Mr. Lee is one person who can change his mind if you're able to convince him. He's a rational person. I'll be honest, I have many debates about him, with him, about Islam and Muslims in Singapore. Many occasions he will call me in the middle of the night to clarify something on Muslim and Muslim. And I would discuss with him, debate with him. And sometimes he will change his point of view. I think that's the mark of the man. He's not rigid. He understands what needs to be done. And if he understands that the other point of view is better, he's prepared to seat the ground. Then I think is the quality of the man. So he's not a, a demagogue. He's not an extremist. He's not a fundamentalist. He's a practical person. He just wants to find the best solution for Singapore. That I find is amazing. And it's easy to talk to him. And I will miss the many sessions that we had in cabinet where you learn a lot from this man basically on his past experience. I'm going to miss him a lot.